Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 5 of the chapter Periodic Classification of Elements. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the modern periodic table. In the previous videos, we discussed the earlier attempts at classifying elements and I told you about Mendeleev and his genius because Mendeleev was the first scientist who could actually um, include all the then known elements and classify them systematically. And before him, uh, Dobrainer could only make three triads and uh, Newton's law of octaves was applicable only up to the element calcium. It did not work beyond that. So it was Mendeleev who was the first person to include all the then known elements and he classified them logically. And he was a genius because he, when, although he arranged them according to their increasing atomic masses, where he found two elements similar in their properties, he gave more importance to the similarity in properties and he placed those elements together. And at that point, he assumed that maybe the mass was not calculated or uh, calculated properly. The other thing that indicated to his genius was that he left empty spaces in the periodic table and he believed that we perhaps do not know all the elements yet and new elements would be discovered and he went ahead and even predicted the properties of these elements which would be discovered at a later date and we actually found elements like germanium and gallium which had properties as predicted by uh, Mendeleev. So that was about Mendeleev. But in 1913, a scientist called Henry Mosley, he carried out a test. He saw the, uh, the X-ray spectrographs given out by the characteristic X-ray spectrographs given out by elements. And he started plotting graphs between the frequency of the X-rays produced and the atomic masses of elements. And he wanted to see if there was a trend. At the same time, he also plotted another graph between these frequencies, the under root of the frequency and the atomic, uh, atomic numbers. And he found that when you plot a graph between the under root of the frequency and atomic number, he gets a straight line. But when he does so with atomic mass, he does not get a straight line, which means that the spectrographs obtained, these are directly related to the atomic number and not the mass number. So he said the atomic mass is not the fundamental pro uh, property of an atom. It is the atomic number which is the fundamental property. And therefore he said that if we classify elements not according to their atomic weights, but if we classify them according to their atomic numbers, maybe it would be easier to, we might find more similarities. So he modified the periodic law given by Mendeleev. Mendeleev's periodic law stated that atoms, the properties of elements are a periodic function of their atomic masses. So he changed the atomic masses and he said no, the properties of elements are a periodic function of their atomic numbers. So this subtle change actually was, was the, where we had reached the basis of modern periodic classification. Atomic number is the number of protons in an atom and in a neutral atom the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons and it is the electronic configuration that is the arrangement of these electrons in an atom which decides the chemical properties of an element. We will study about this as we uh, go further. But if you, it would not be wrong to say that the modern periodic table, the basis for the modern periodic classification is not the atomic number, rather it is the periodic, uh, it is the electronic configuration. Now this is what the modern periodic table looks like. This is how he made it and it had 18 groups which were called vertical columns and 7 periods that is horizontal rows. So these horizontal rows were known as periods and the vertical columns they were called groups. There were 18 groups and uh, mostly initially when he named these groups he called them 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A and then there were three groups that were called 8 and then we had 1B, 2B, 3B, 4B, 5B, 6B, 7B and then the last group was called the zero group because this group was actually added later. Now 
in the modern classification it was felt that this uh, division of a and b uh, is unnecessary rather if we just number them from 1 to 18 it's easier so in the modern periodic table we accept these as group 1 to group 18 so the vertical rows were called groups now i want you to really understand how the electronic configuration is related to and why do i say that this entire periodic table is made on the basis of electronic configuration we had done in one of the previous videos about we would studied about the electronic configuration that the 1s orbitals fill up first and then the 2s orbitals then the 2p orbitals then 3s then 3p 4s 3d 4p 4s 4d 5p 6s 4f 5d 6p 7s 5f 6d and 7p within these orbitals all the 118 elements that we talk of today the periodic table has 118 elements all of these are accommodated in these orbitals and they fill up in this sequence the s orbitals have only one orbital and they contain two electrons p orbitals have three orbitals the p subshell has three orbitals and they have six electrons because every orbital has two electrons d orbitals are five and they can have 10 electrons and f orbitals are seven and they can have 14 electrons so we find do you see i've written in different colors here when we start with the first element atomic number one is hydrogen hydrogen has only one electron if it has only one electron that one electron goes to 1s orbital so the first first row or the first group consists of elements in which one electron goes in the s subshell i told you that there are seven periods these seven periods talk are actually the different principal quantum numbers the first shell, the second shell, third shell, fourth shell, five, six, and seven. So these seven are actually the principal quantum number. The first shell, second shell, third, four, five, six, seven. So hydrogen has one electron which goes to the 1s shell. Therefore, it is placed in the first group. Now, helium is the second element. It has two electrons. So the second electron also goes to 1s. So helium should actually, you know, hydrogen and helium, although they've been placed here in the periodic table, uh, there's a little, um, they are abnormal. Hydrogen, although is placed at the right place, that is, it should be with the uh, group where 1s1 is the, uh, s1 is the configuration, 1, 2, 3, whatever be the principal quantum number. It, uh, it actually does not resemble the properties of these elements. And helium, although it should be placed here because it has two electrons in the 1s orbital, it has been placed here uh, where it does not resemble the configuration of the rest of the members, but its properties are similar to those. So hydrogen and helium, when we study the periodic table, we, could, we would like to leave them and then study about the rest to understand the trends. So helium has 1s2. Uh, I'll neglect why it is placed there. We'll, I'll explain that later. Now we come to the third element is lithium. Lithium has three electrons. Two go to 1s and one goes to 2s. So in hydrogen, there was one electron in the 1s shell, but in lithium, there is one electron in the 2s. Beryllium has two electrons in the 2s. Therefore, it is placed here. It's the second group. So in these first two groups, it is the s orbitals which are being filled up. The s orbital of different uh, principal quantum numbers of different shells. So the first group has one electron in the s orbital and the second group has two electrons in the s orbital of that shell. So that decides the position of the element according to its atomic number and according to its electronic configuration. So beryllium has two electrons, uh, sorry, lithium has three electrons, it comes below this and beryllium has four. So the first two electrons go to 1s and the next two go to 2s, therefore beryllium has this position. And then we come the next electron, that is the fifth element, the electron should go to a p orbital. So the p orbitals is boron has atomic number five and the electron goes to the p orbital. So the, when you have five electrons, this fifth electron should go to the p orbital. The configuration of boron, what should it be? It has five electrons. 1s2, 2s2, 
2p1. So 2p1 comes here. Carbon has 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. It comes next. Then this is 2p3, 2p4, 2p5, 2p6. After that, the p orbital is filled up. So we notice that these three, these six groups are actually the p orbitals being filled up. These two were the s orbitals being filled up and then these six are the ones where the p orbitals of that particular shell are being filled up. It, and the same pattern follows as you go down, only the shell changes. After 3p, 4s. Do you see here? 4s, two electrons go to calcium is the 20th element. 20th element means 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 6 and 2 here. That is calcium. The next element, electron should go to 3d. Since the next electron should go to 3d, therefore scandium has one electron in the 3d orbital. And these are 10 groups. There are 5d orbitals and the 10 groups are here, the 10 electrons. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So here we have the d block, we call it the d block elements. And after here the d uh, orbitals are being filled up and then after the I might have to continue, uh, this video might break, so I might have to continue explaining this in the next video. Please bear with me. So the 3D orbitals, they have, uh, they, are, uh, they are 10 in number. So once the 10 orbitals in the 3D are filled up, the next electron goes to 4P. So do you see here that in 4P you have gallium. The electron goes to get, goes to the, the 31st element would be gallium and the electron would 